Hi, so in this video, we're going to try and answer the question we posed in the end of the last shunting inhibition video. And as a recap, that question was, can we, will we experience that same shunting inhibition phenomenon if instead of using an inhibitory synapse as a shunt, we use an excitatory synapse as a shunt? And the short answer to that question is yes. And the answer is rooted in that same Ohm's law equation that we were going over last time, that delta V equals delta I times R input. And by the way, in the last video, I should have been putting deltas before my I's because I was putting deltas behind my V's just for consistency. And if we remember correctly, we defined our input in the last one. So if you need a recap on what our input is, you should check out part one. But in essence, if we opened up more ex an excitatory channel consistently, uh, immediately before we open up a another excitatory channel, would we still be increasing that R input or decreasing that R input? Would we still be decreasing that R input, you know, relative to that situation where we only open up the second synapse? And that sounds confusing, and I'll draw it out in a second. But just remember that if we are opening more channels, we are decreasing the R input. And that does, that's, that's true whether we're talking about opening more excitatory channels or we're talking about opening up more inhibitory channels. The, 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 there's really no difference in terms of input resistance. So we would expect that that local region of membrane space would still be generally less excitable. And the conceptual way to think about it is there would still be a shunt for current to move out. And to really the way we would prove it is we would take one postsynaptic synapse and two presynaptic synapse, one postsynaptic neuron and two presynaptic neurons and these two presynaptic neurons are synapsing in a very close region of space and let's just call the resting potential of this postsynaptic neuron negative 70 millivolts and just to keep things simple we'll call threshold for an action potential somewhere like negative 55 millivolts and that's just to, to make sure we don't we're making it very far away so we don't conf we don't approach that number and we don't have to worry about action potentials and analyzing these numbers and let's say that this first synapse this this first neuron if we were to activate an action potential we usually would expect uh, a three millivolt increase in the postsynaptic neuron so this one would contribute plus three millivolts and the second one down here let's just say would contribute plus two millivolts normally and if we were to try and you know open these synapses in a very close time frame to, to one another we would expect if shunting inhibition were not there that they would linearly summate the, the, the voltage would linearly summate to something like negative 65 millivolts we wouldn't be close to thresholds we wouldn't be expecting anything greater than that but we definitely wouldn't be expecting anything less than a five millivolt jump now it turns out when we draw it and we have a voltage on the side and time, this would be the graph. If we were recording from the postsynaptic neuron over here, if we you know, stuck an electrode in, one inside, one outside, and we compare the voltages, we would, let's just call this negative 70 and this negative 65. We would see here, and let's say we were to activate both of them and we'd be, you know, it's, it's really doing them really close to one another in space, close to one another in time, so we wouldn't really be worrying about too much decay due to, you know, time and space. We really, we'd be maximizing temporal and spatial summation. And what would happen is, that's an ugly drawing, we would see a jump, but not a jump that quite reaches negative 65. This, we would be, you know, significantly below negative 65. And this difference over here is basically too much to be, it's too, too large to be accounted for by, you know, just decay due to time and space, especially in this theoretical construct that we made here. And that, that difference is actually due to the decrease in excitability because there's an decreased input resistance, uh, you know, in, in, in the postsynaptic neuron in this local region of membrane space. So what, to, what the, thing to keep in, the thing to keep in mind is that we'd be multiplying by a smaller number here, whether we opened up more excitatory channels or more inhibitory channels. And this is kind of a counterintuitive response, a counterintuitive answer. And it was so counterintuitive that I actually checked it with a 
look like a, with an authority of on electrophysiology at UCLA, and he actually confirmed the response. So in short, the answer to the question was yes. We would still see that shunting inhibition phenomenon. And I thank you guys for listening to this video, and I hope you guys tune in for the next ones.